So guys, let's take a look at this pathway, the adrenal steroid synthesis pathway. First of all, the precursor molecule to this whole pathway is cholesterol. And it enters into the adrenal cells via this molecule called star. So this is the rate limiting step of this whole process. And once it enters, it will be acted on by this enzyme cholesterol desmolase. And that is going to be stimulated by ACTH or CRH which is from the hypothalamus pituitary axis. Now, there is an antifungal drug called ketonazole, ketoconazole, that can inhibit this enzyme. And this will, cholesterol molecule will form a molecule called pregnenolone. Now, this pregnenolone is the precursor molecule to progesterone. And our goal right now is to synthesize pro progesterone. But some molecules of pregnenolone will directly be acted on by this enzyme, this very, very important enzyme called 17 alpha hydroxylase. And if so, it will form 17 hydroxy pregnenolone. What does that mean? In the 17th molecule, this, this molecule, this entire molecule, cholesterol, is a 21 molecular compound. And at point 17, it will form seven, an OH group. And that will be acted on by 1720 lyase and it will form dehydroepiandosterone, DHEA. Let's go into more details there, there after we go into this pathway. So this is going to be the fate of progesterone. Progesterone molecules, let's say two of them come here. They will be acted on by, I, one will be acted on by 17 alpha hydroxylase. That is this molecule. If so, that will enter into the pathway that will form glucocorticoids or androgens. Now, if this molecule is acted on by this enzyme, it will form hydroxyprogesterone. So let's take three molecules and two of these are acted on by this hydroxyprogesterone, it's by 17 alpha hydroxylase. One molecule can go in this pathway it can decide and go in this 1720 lyase pathway the other molecule can keep going straight think of tunnels think of cars now these two cars are traveling in a straight line parallel to each other so they will be acted on by this enzyme 21 hydroxylase so the progesterone here is going to be acted on directly by this 21 hydroxylase and that will form 11 deoxycortisone on this pathway, the corticosteroid, uh, sorry, aldosterone pathway. On the other side, there's the 11 deoxycortisol form because of this enzyme activity on 17 hydroxyprogesterone. And then those two molecules in the two different pathways will be acted on by this other pathway. Think of these enzymes as the routes, the directions that these molecules are going. So this car will form corticosterone and this car will form cortisol and what you need to know is finally for the molecule that the car that came this way the enzyme aldosterone synthase will be activated due to the action of angiotensin 2 and when that happens aldosterone will be formed. Now let's take a look at the other one, cortisol. So cortisol can form cortisone. Now let me tell some important uh, facts. These molecules which are present in this pathway have weak effect. They can exhibit the same effect of aldosterone but in a weaker way. This is Im important for MCQs. That's the first point. The next one is, there are some drugs which can inhibit these enzymes. And what you need to know about these enzymes are, it is very important. So the 21 hydroxylase can be inhibited by metirapone. This is a drug which can inhibit that. It can also be deficit in a congenital way. That means it could be inheritedly, it could be inherited as a defective gene. Next, 
the drug glycyretinic acid. Now that will inhibit the formation of cortisol by 11 deoxycortisol. So next let's take a look at this pregnenolone pathway. It has formed the HEA now and this hydroxyprogesterone the car that went in this way will also enter this route the 1720 lyase route and they will form the same molecule it's called the androstenedione and the androstenedione can go directly into peripheral tissues so all these molecules here are in the peripheral tissues that is not in the adrenal gland or it can convert to testosterone in the zona reticularis of the adrenal gland so if it forms testosterone that too will go into the peripheral tissues and it can be acted on either by aromatase to form estradiol or it can be acted on by 5-alpha reductase to form DHT dihydrotestosterone directly so here are the pathways aromatase is the enzyme that will convert androstenedione or testosterone to either estrone or estradiol respectively and these drugs anastrozole letrozole and exemestane these drugs can inhibit aromatase enzyme the 5 alpha reductase can be inhibited by finasteride so this is the whole pathway and the best way to imagine this is assuming these molecules are cars and these are different pathways route 17 route 21 route 11 and the cholesterol that enters so these cars they will form pregnenolone first and some cars will go on to form progesterone while one car decides no i'm going to go in a different pathway because my final goal is to form dht that goes here and that will go passing this 1720 lyase route so it is going to keep going this way and finally it will enter the peripheral tissues and that will form this dht so it can stop in any of these locations and decide okay i'm done but the final product is going to be dht the other cars they will go and they come to this intersection where they choose to either go in the 17 alpha hydroxylase pathway or they choose to go in a more in a less known pathway that is a, a route without a road so the ones that decide to go in the 17 alpha hydroxylase pathway they get a choice now they can either go to form dht they can go in the 1720 lyase route and form DHT or they can go downwards they can go parallel to the vehicles that went here so if that's the case they will have to pass through several routes including the 21 hydroxylase route then the 11 hydroxylase route and all the time parallel to the one that comes out as aldosterone This will form so this is it for this pathway it's difficult but it is important because these enzyme deficiencies will come for the exam